ask you something? Yeah. Um, the mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a question, it's just a statement. <laughs> <laughs> See, why are you, get, why, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Are you going? <laughs> I gotta stand up now. So on the latest episode of Flagrant with Andy and the Toy Story Boys, their guest was stand-up comedian and actor Sebastian Maniscalco. He released his first comedy special back in 2009, and now he has a total of six specials to his name, and he's also done a bit of acting in movies like Green Book, The Irishman, and also some TV work. But more recently, he wrote and starred in a film called About My Father with Robert De Niro, which turned out to be a massive box office bomb and got absolutely smashed by critics, but didn't do too badly with the audience. It made $18 million at the box office, and it was released alongside Burt Kreischer's The Machine movie, which only made $10 million. And when you consider that Bill Burr's recent movie, Old Dads, was terrible as well, I think it's safe to say comedians really need to just stop making cringy feel-good movies, even if they co-star with A-listers like De Niro and Mark Hamill. Good stand-up writing just doesn't seem to translate to the silver screen. But having said that, I'm actually a bit of a fan of Maniscalco. He's carved out a nice piece of the stand-up comedy audience. His last two specials were released on Netflix, and he can wear a leather jacket without looking like a complete tool. In a sense, he kind of reminds me of Eddie Murphy, except he caters more to the Italian-American community with his you know, nostalgic jokes and massive physical comedy game. He absolutely nails the facial expressions and body language, but he's not the kind of comedian you can binge watch, in my opinion. Anyway, his appearance on Flagrant just recently reminded me a lot of Shane Gillis's recent appearance on Flagrant, so I'm going to take you through all the cringiest bits where Schultze outs himself as a hacky, brogan comedy brat. You told this story and this shit resonated so much. It was about like the the nerves and anxiety you had on the Irishman. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't done the Irishman, or, but but there is something about like you sold out Madison Square Garden a million times. Like you've done arenas around the world. You're the highest selling con and you walk into a movie set and all that just goes away. It goes away, man. Yeah, so th this is something I'm not used to doing, which yeah. is acting, you yeah, know. Yeah. I do stand up pretty much, you know, every night or trying to work on stuff. So yeah. now I'm in uh, a scene with Pesci, yeah. De Niro, <laughs> and Scorsese's coming out of nowhere. Like, I don't even know where this guy is at in, yeah, in, yeah. on set. Yeah. And uh, it's nerve-wracking. It's, yeah. it's, you know, I, I, I had a lot of anxiety also, doing like, that. I wonder if it's only in us where we can feel like the top of the world in our industry and that it means nothing the second we're in Hollywood. Yeah. And they kind of treat you as if it means nothing. Yeah, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything. Like, did, did, did the grips and stuff, the people who work on, this, on the movie, know, they know you and you're like the biggest star, right? See, I never even think anybody knows me. See, yeah, I swear is, to God. This is, it's just, I, it, but I get what he's saying. Yeah, go on, go. Yeah, I mean, like, I, you know, every time I put tickets on sale, you know, I ask myself, is anybody <laughs> coming? <laughs> <laughs> so, um... You see, like Shane Gillis, Maniscalco knows that his number one job is to entertain his audience. Turning up just isn't good enough. You've got to bring the laughs. And that's where that stress and anxiety seems to come from. These other Muppets don't care about that. They just want to get paid every time they turn the mic on and think that it's our privilege to listen to them speak about anything. <laughs> and you can see right there, something that I've come to find is a common theme with great entertainers. It's that imposter syndrome that creeps in and never leaves them. I find that so interesting because they come off as so confident and relaxed, especially Maniscalco with that swagger and charisma that he brings to his stand-up and even in these interviews. But I think that's what makes these kind of guys so relatable and down to earth. He knows who he is and where he stands, and he's not trying to protect Pretend he's something else. I'll give you an example. I uh, I did this voiceover in Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. I was Spike. I have two kids, six and four. So we're at Universal Studios. There is a Super Mario store. So I said, I said kids, come on in. Let's go see Daddy's character. They got every character on the wall but mine, yeah. Spike. Yeah. So that's kind of sums up my career. Yeah. I'm 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 I'm. People, I have fans, yeah. but I'm not like widely known. It's funny I you think that. That's so that funny you all. think that. Like the Hollywood Matrix thinks it's like this weird like sideshow. 
And we walk in and we're like, women, no, 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 we are, this is the coolest thing and we're the best at it. And they're like, that's great. Here's your lines, here's your set, there's your trailer, you're sharing with three other guys, there's one bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, you're yeah. like, I travel on a bus everywhere I go. Like, we don't give a yeah, it Yeah, it doesn't translate over to, like you're saying, TV and film. I, I you know, but that's just expected. You know, it's interesting how when comedians get big enough, they seem to all want to head over to Hollywood and do movies or TV shows. And I think it's mainly from guys who don't have big podcasts or social media followings. Maniscalco actually mentioned this on this episode of Flagrant that he likes to do those kinds of gigs for the exposure that it brings. And then he can capitalize on that with his stand-up tours, which is where he's obviously most comfortable. So that was just some interesting background on Maniscalco and how he sees himself in the industry. I felt like I should at least give you guys a bit of info on him, even though I know a lot of you know who he is. He's obviously super famous now, but I've never spoken about him on my channel before. So then let's get into some cringy bits now, because for some reason, when Andy and the Toy Story boys sense that one of their guests has a backbone and lives a principled existence, they go all weird and quiet and they don't know what to say. It's like they fish for little gotcha moments to make themselves feel better about their own soulless existence. Mind you, Sebastian's only 10 years older than Andrew. Do you, do you get road rage at all when you're driving? Uh, no, like, at, the, at, this, at this age, I, uh, I actually relish the time in traffic. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, why? why? Uh, generally, when I'm driving uh, and I'm going to get in traffic, I'm alone. And those times, if I have an audio book or a podcast on, I actually welcome it. Mm. Yeah, there's no real road rage. Yeah, kids, and when yeah. I have kids, yeah. <laughs> to me, it's more time in the car with them. So uh -huh. I like it. Uh, yes, you like the family. You like, you I'm like a family guy. the kids. Very traditional, yeah. very family. Okay, family. we're not into the family yet. <laughs> See how the conversation goes dead when one of their guests says something completely normal and well thought out? If you recall, they did the exact same thing with Shane Gillis when he was on, where they were all sitting around dumbfounded as to why Gillis wasn't a diva like Schultz is. What is Protein, your one bro. bougie thing? What is your one thing that it's oh, that's like, a great question. Yeah, for I'm you. a little bit. I'm a little bit like I wouldn't want people to know. Yeah. I'm a little bit. I don't care if they know. I have first class flights. Have to do first class, yes. so you can read your Steinbeck. I was really impressed with that. <sighs> Shut up. Oh, okay, Obama, what's right what's the right. other bougie expense? Is it like okay? Obviously, the comfort of first class. Is there anything? Is there anything you're like? Ugh, I didn't know that I was this guy, and then you experience it, and you're like, now I kind of have to be this guy. No. Really? No. Hotels, you don't care? You don't have to stay at a nice hotel? Hotels. Okay, so the, we're going to find a lot of things. a little. But no, it, it was like, I thought I was like, I don't care where I stay. And then I got in the worst hotel possible. And it's like, I, no. I like called my manager and I was like, all right, can we, what the f Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking like the worst hotel possible. Yeah. Like motel, like you park in front of the f Yeah. Yeah. All right, so what do you demand right now? Nothing. You have a rider? No. Any I snack? I any can't snack? No. I can't figure you out. In my green room, I get fruit and hummus. Hummus is good. And Solid. Bud Light and White Claws. Solid. But mm. that was just my manager came up with that. I <laughs> cannot <laughs> figure it. Out. That's I, a writer. I can't figure you out. Why? That is a writer, but he's saying he didn't come up. I with didn't it. do that. She just did it. She yeah. knows. But it's a nice. It's a nice luxury. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, but it's like, what else? You want steak dinners? And well, I want chicken and steak. Because no, I don't want to just eat. You see, the I don't want to eat pizza. Yeah, you That's see it. the difference between hummus and white claws. What do we start with? We what have a steak? hummus platter that's hummus there platter. all the time. No, you start with that. His whole rider is just hummus <laughs> and white claw. So it's a there's a difference. So what are you ordering for dinner? That's what I'm saying. It's like I'm. That <laughs> is crazy. What's going on here? What we're we talking about? Nothing. There's got to be one. You've got some money. No, 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 there's no. got to be a thing. It's, he's embarrassed to be remotely demanding. I would never be demanding. See. Out of shame. Ever. Now, now. The perception, I mean, hopefully I get there. The perception of bougie <laughs> is worse like, than the perception like of gay. Oh, that's shame. interesting. That's interesting. Okay, so. This is the, I have one pair of pants. These shoes stink. I've been wearing them for three months. <laughs> that's a three-month white sneaker? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Oh man, when Al says, I can't figure you out, it gets me every single time. It's like they caught an alien and they're trying to understand their peculiar ways. <laughs> and so the same thing continued here with Maniscalco. It's like they won't stop until their guest reaffirms their preconceived ideas of how a celebrity comic should behave so they can justify their own diva-like tendencies. Let's say, for example... Drop in your car. Because I've heard some legendary tipping, right? Like, you know, I remember I was hanging with Rogan once. He drops the car off 
It's a hundred. Picks it up. It's a hundred. Mm. Okay, that's 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 that's, <laughs> that's, that's aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we're not, he's responsible. He just said he was responsible. He's responsible. I don't know why, but when Andrew told that story about Rogan, all I pictured was Joe hopping out of his car and being the same height outside, standing up as he was sitting down inside the car. I don't know why, but now I just can't unsee it. Sorry if I've ruined it for you guys as well. Anyway, the efforts to reveal Sebastian's true colours continued in vain, but this next story was actually really funny. Take a look and I'll ask you a seemingly obvious question afterward. When did you get enough money where you started to release a little of your economic anxiety? Or is it still there? It's it's always going to be there. Just the way I was raised. My father. Nothing chipped away? Mm, Listen, do I spend money? Yeah. Yeah. My wife has that in her. What does that mean? Just like. Spending money? Let's have a party. (laughs) (laughs) I I love to have parties. Okay. But the way my wife does parties and the way I do parties are two different things. Okay, how so? What is the difference? What's your ideal party? We had a Christmas party last year. So they, they, yeah. they, they, uh, we had a, a plan, a party planner. They bring in furniture. It's a, it's a whole, which I kind of like, because then it doesn't fuck up your furniture, and you don't have anxiety about people spilling. Shit over. I'm into the the furniture. Yeah, bringing in the furniture, but again, furniture is a is a really high expense when you're dealing with a party. To rent furniture, it's 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 a big debt, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got the bartender, you got the catering. You got, th- there's a lot that goes into having a Christmas party, at least in my wife's eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I said, this year, let's, let's do something small, you know? Let's have uh, eight, 10 people over at the house. We'll, we'll get the, our friend Dom to, to, to cater it. We'll get uh, some drinks, I'll pour them. Right? We, don't, <laughs> we don't need a bartender. Yeah. But as, as it starts, you know, to, to go, it's like, all right, next thing you know, well, there's a truck in the driveway yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's moving people in, yeah. in my house. So yeah. it's, uh, I like to entertain. I yeah. really do. Yeah. And if I spend my money on anything, I don't buy, I don't buy cars. I don't buy jewelry. I buy experiences. Yeah. And if I have experiences with my friends, my family, or yeah. if it's a vacation, I'd rather spend my money on that than go out and, and my home. Okay. Okay. Hang on. All right. Is that actually a thing? Do people really hire furniture for a party? I'm not talking about tables and chairs if you're having like an engagement party or a wedding or whatever. I'm talking like lounges and rugs, like coffee tables and all that. If that's legit, that has to be one of the cringiest rich people things I've ever heard. Imagine going to someone's house and they have all this random furniture in there to impress their guests and then everyone already knows that they've rented it out for the party because they've been to their house like during the day for coffee. I don't know. What do I know anyway? I still use a washcloth in the shower. Anyway, Schultz kept poking and prodding to the point where Maniscalco actually had to tell him straight up that basically you got to get over the money thing, bro. Move on. This was great. Take a look. I just had a 50th birthday party. There was like 50 people at the at the party. Ooh, that you kept it tight. I kept it tight. Because you could have extended. I yeah, we could have you know really blown it out. But yeah, uh, we, what do you, what you spend t- on something like that? What do you spend on a nice little 50th birthday party? <laughs> um, I mean, it's not 10 G's. Like you wouldn't just spend 10 grand on a little 50th birthday party. I'm, I'm, I'm not in the pricing. Yeah, he's, he's not comfortable with this. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not I mean, we can do it. He's a Catholic no, no, kid, no, no, bro. He's on, not going to talk about money. You, you should know. Italians never. It's an immigrant. Yeah. The vault. Yeah. What they're spending oh, on stuff. Because they got over on you? Okay. They got over Because hey. no, no, no. if you got a deal, you would have told me. No. <laughs> Please believe me. If you got a deal, the first thing you would have told me. I, I, I'll just give you this. million? No, no, no. Not a million dollars. Two million? There's no. <laughs> two million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> a party? Are you crazy? No. I, can I guess? Can I throw a guess? You don't have to say yes or no. I think it's I think it's seventy-five. Seventy-five thousand dollars? Yeah. Um, might, I might be a hundred. Actually, money is so dirty, right? It's yeah, dirty. it's a but dirty it's business. So fun. Money's so fun. Are, are you a guy that likes to tell people, "Yeah, I dropped fifty grand on a kit car"? Yes, because <laughs> yes, <laughs> exact example. Because it's so embarrassing, I can save the number. Yeah, but would you tell me how much you spent when you for your wedding? No, I wouldn't. Share. Okay, okay. So we got a deal. <laughs> we got a deal. We got a deal. I would tell you on the side. I would tell you on the side because we got a deal. We got a nice deal. 
All right, see, I won't even tell you if when the camera's off and yeah. we leave, I won't even tell you what I spent on my 50th birthday party. But you want to know what I spent on my wedding. I don't care. You do a little I bit. I really don't. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tiny bit. I don't care. You do a little I bit. I really don't. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tiny bit. Oh man, that's so good. He literally told Schultzy to his face that he didn't care and then proceeded to laugh in his face while patting him on the shoulder. That's a classic flagrant moment right there. I'll definitely keep that one in my back pocket for future reference. But man, Schultzy would not drop the money talk. I've noticed that he does this thing where he asks his guests questions in a way that allows him to flex on them and brag about his own success and fame, but mask it all into the conversation. So they were talking about Sebastian's latest special from last year and how he took this year off so that he could get ready for his tour next year, which is what he was promoting on Flagrant in this episode. So I'm going to pick this up in a moment and I'm also going to bring in Bert Kreischer because I think there's another interesting comparison to make. But first, let's take a look at this clip. It's a lot of pressure to come up with material. That's the thing. Like, you don't well, you have a podcast, but it's not like a source of you, your life's uh, income. Like you can't just your 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 podcast is broke. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, you, it is. You know, yeah. yeah. Is. There's fortunately, no you make the most money ever doing comedy, so you can afford these amazing <laughs> things that you do. But for us, we can make a living on the pod, and then it puts less pressure on. Okay, I got to get a new hour ready to go by this time. Okay, so let me break this down. Sebastian's last Netflix special titled Is It Me was released around this time last year, almost exactly to the day actually. And so what Schultz was talking about there was how Sebastian has taken this whole year off and he's coming back for a tour next year in July titled It Ain't Right. Now, Andrew's point was because he has the flagrant podcast, which makes around a quarter of a million dollars a month, plus another 70 to 80K a month on Patreon, he doesn't have to stress about his income if he was to take the same amount of time off as Sebastian did. Now, don't be mistaken though, Sebastian is one of the highest grossing comics at the moment from touring and releasing specials, etc. So he's clearly got millions in the bank. He doesn't have to worry, right? But what I found so interesting about this whole conversation was this next bit. For me, this is probably one of the biggest distinguishing features of comedians like Maniscalco compared to guys like Schultz and Burt Kreischer. But also the cool thing is that you get to work from home, you're around your family, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things where you don't have that pressure to, oh, shit, I need a new hour by February. Mm -hmm. So I let's go because this tour starts here and I got to go. Yeah. You could do that whenever the hell you want to. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but it, but it is difficult to, to come up with. How the f*** are you coming up with a new hour? Well, I got to live. That's why I took some time off. I, I, you know, I, I was constantly on the road, this and that and the other thing. I didn't have no time to even live my life to extract any material. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? Let me let me take a beat here. Let me concentrate on other things, whether it be a TV show, the podcast. Let me spend some time with my family. Smart. And uh, I was talking to Chris Rock about this, and he kind of put it, he goes, there's no way you could make a, an entrance if you never leave the room. There's a thing that sometimes you see comics doing with, with it. As part of the joke, they're referencing when they did. One time I did this in Alabama, and then this happened. And, I'm, and every time I see it, I'm like, oh, you're not living a life outside of comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Like the only things that are happening to you that are like worth talking about are the other things that are happening in comedy. Yeah. And people don't do comedy. They don't do comedy. They, they live, live they life. Live. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. You got, you got to extract from real life experiences. So that right there, apart from the obvious talent gap, is precisely what differentiates comedians like Maniscalco from guys like Tom and Bert. Those other guys are constantly putting out content, overexposing themselves, both figuratively and literally, and just generally trying to jam way too much into each month compared to what they can actually handle. And so when it comes time for them to do a tour or put out a special, it comes off as rushed and unedited and generally lacking originality or thought. Take a Did you notice how Bert was only concerned with milking his fame for every dollar? He didn't mention once his actual fans and ensuring that his comedy is of a certain standard so that they actually enjoy his shows. He's got that shotgun approach where it's all about capitalizing on momentum. But what Bert misses is exactly what Sebastian was saying. And credit to Schultz, he actually agreed and made some good points himself. 
You need time to go outside and smell the fresh air, spend time with friends and family and live your own life. I can see how that would be a great source of inspiration for really creative comedians like Sebastian, who use real life experiences and turn them into interesting stories and observations. Guys like Bert seem to think that their lives are just inherently interesting or that they have this ability to just grind it out and write jokes every night because of their comedy brains. So I really appreciated hearing Sebastian's views and his approach to stand-up comedy. It's funny how you can tell within five minutes of listening to these guys if they're a real comedian or just a poser. <laughs> anyway, that's my breakdown of Sebastian Maniscalco's appearance on Flagrant. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about all of this. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider jumping on board so you get all my uploads right there in your feed. That's it from me. I'll catch you in the next one. So this one right now, this tour that you're announcing, tickets are on sale. Right now. Right this second. Yeah, Ticketmaster, and uh, it's for July. And and this one, you were telling me before, this is about just how insanely rich you are and like, <laughs> right? Didn't you say no, like- No, I didn't have so that. You were like, I have so much money no, now, so no, now no, I get no, to no. tell Cole, everybody- Cole, I stopped being relatable. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys won't get it. Is that what the- <laughs> His yeah, Ellen DeGeneres been, yeah. hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not, you're not, you don't have money until you start parking bikes in your living room. <laughs> 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 That's where the real success is. Uh, <laughs>